Well, it is good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. It's good to be saved. I want to welcome everyone that's here in the congregation. And I also want to welcome those that are tuning in by live stream, Facebook, and YouTube. It is good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. If you will we'll stand, we'll say our pledge to allegiance to the American flag. Get right into opening up the church. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 1, the book of Luke, chapter 1. I'll read two verses. I'll give you a second there to open, open up to that. Amen. Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. <clears throat> two verses. It's verse 32, verse 33. These are prophetical statements. <clears throat> Scripture reads, And he shall be great, speaking of the Christ child, Amen. shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, And he, speaking of Jesus, shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Thank you for standing in the word of God. These are prophetical statements. Uh, they was given uh, uh, angels speaking to Mary. We know this about the child that she was going to have. And I would like for us just to uh, think about the, the circle of life, a circle of events, how things come into our life, how things go. But if it's according to the Word of God, it, it is going to happen. Right, man. Old Amen. Testament prophecy that there was going to be a child born. Amen. A son was going to be given. Amen. Right. That he was going to sit on a throne. The government right. was going to reside on his shoulder. Right. Amen. Right. So we know that Jesus was born and he was given. Right. Yeah. And we have the rest of the prophecy. And if you'll notice in the scripture that the throne was going to be of his father David. Right. Now we know David was an earthly king. So if this prophecy is going to be fulfilled. The throne and the kingdom is going to be an earthly kingdom. Right, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of speculation on millennial reign, and folks, according to the word of God, he is going to sit on an earthly throne, and he's going to reign on an earthly kingdom. Right, amen. man. And I say amen for that. Right. He says, the throne of David. It's going to be his father's throne, David. We know David was an earthly king. Then if we'll go down here to verse 33, more. he said he's going to reign over his people, Jacob. Jacob was the earthly name. Israel was the spiritual name. So we have two prophecies that are stating that Christ is going to reign on an earthly throne mm -hmm. and it's going to be earthly people right, right. so right. what is this telling us well if we believe the first part of the prophecy we're going to have to believe the second part of the right. prophecy right. 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 man we believe this by faith hey, my. what are you what are you getting to thank you for asking <laughs> before christ came the government had gotten corrupt God's people had gotten apathetic and complacent. Right. And 
then God, we see the hand of God moving. And if you want to see complacency and uh, people being apathetic, read the book of Malachi. Right. You can see this. This is the last book in the Old Testament. Right. Mm -hmm. Then for 400 years, we have the heavens being silenced. Mm -hmm. No voice of God. Right. So without the voice of God, we have man getting more complacent and more apathetic in his heart, which leads to a lifestyle of following the flesh, do what the flesh wants to do. Right, bro. So we have, according to the scriptures, the last church age, if we want to use it as a church age, we have the Laodicea church age, which means the rights of the people. Do what your flesh wants to do. Right. Where, bro? So what are you getting at? I'm getting that there's getting ready to be prophecy fulfilled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're living in a time now that we should not get complacent. Amen. Though our government is getting more corrupt by the day, that should not uh, dictate to us to get apathetic according to our life in Christ. We need to keep going on for the glory of God Amen. because Jesus is coming. Right. Amen. He is going to take the, the church out of here. Yep. Right. But folks, he is going to reign on the throne. He, it is going to be a millennial reign. He is right. going to reign over his people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So what are you saying? I'm saying it's not a time for us to stop doing what he wants us to do. Right. Though the the darkness is getting darker. Yeah. And we're seeing the evilness, the wickedness right. in high places. Yeah. And it's and it, it, what it'll do is it'll create in us an apathetic spirit. If this is if it's gonna continue to go down, what is the point of me trying to achieve greater heights? Because he's not come yet doesn't mean he's not coming. Right. And if we want to be found faithful, we're going to have to keep on the fire line going right. on for the cause of Christ. Right. Amen. Doesn't matter how wicked our government gets. Right. It doesn't matter how apathetic maybe our brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ get. Right. That's got nothing to do with me. I want to go on for the glory of God right. because my king is coming. Right. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to have a song for you here in just a minute. I want to welcome everybody on YouTube and also uh, Facebook that's tuning in to, to today. We uh, appreciate you taking time out for our broadcast here at New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, got some thank you cards I'd like to read. This one is from a uh, lady here at our church named uh, Sister Patsy Hart. She uh, had some surgery. And she says, Dear New Hope Church family, thank you for the prayers. Through this storm, God has been good to me. Thank you for the basket of goodies. Please continue to pray for all the sick loved ones. Hope to be back at church soon. Love in Christ, Patsy Hart. So we appreciate that from Sister Patsy. That will be going on the bulletin board. Also, this is a uh, card from the Neal family. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Psalms 107, 1. And a special thanks to you. Words cannot express how thankful we are for such a wonderful church family. We appreciate all the prayers, love, and support you have shown our family. Things will be so different, but we must press on. Amen. Love each and every one of you, the Neal family. Amen. And we appreciate that. That will be going on the bulletin board also. Here on our bulletin today on the front was something put that will make us think a little bit. It says, hold everything earthly with a loose hand, but grasp eternal things with a death-like grip. Amen. That's what we need to do. Amen. And we're not, we're only here for a little while, but there's greater things yet to come for the Amen. child of God. Amen. Amen. Let's see great this morning. Praise the Lord. He will set up his kingdom. Regardless of the good that can be done on this world, there will never be perfect peace until the Prince of Peace <coughs> rules and reigns. Amen. Amen. We had some birthdays this past week. Pearl Templeton had a birthday. It was on February 3rd. Garland Worley had a birthday, February the 5th. Barbara Stollop, she had a birthday on February the, the 6th. We call her Bobby. And then Jimmy and Judy Nunley had an anniversary on February the 2nd. So we wanted to recognize all of these. In our pastor's corner, I put today, praise the Lord. Glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Everyone is welcome. 
Here are some important dates of February. February 12th will be Lincoln's birthday. February 14th, which will be next Sunday, will be Valentine's Day. Uh, February 15th is President's Day, and February 22nd is Washington's birthday. When we miss Brother Johnny Neal, he was a great daddy, a great deacon, a great dedicated child of God. But praise God, we will meet him again. And it's all possible through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. We will continue to have services 11 a.m. and Sunday at 7 p.m. I mean, uh, 11 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We will give you notice when we go back to all our regular services. Uh, Wednesday night, the 17th, will be stewardship meeting. So we ask all our church folk to remember that. Continue to pray for our country and all the churches standing on truth. And God bless you all. And thought of this week for the bulletin came from Brother Arnold Roberts. Think about this. Concern moves you to action. Jesus calls for decision. It is not difficult to gain access to the source of the wisdom. What is more of a challenge is following its directives. Amen. Following his directives and going in his direction. We don't need to lean to our own understanding, but we need to always look to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Let's move. When you call on one who you cannot see, and you give him your heart for all eternity, that's when.
see him. Amen. amen. Our faith will end inside. Amen. Once again, we appreciate everyone tuning in today. I appreciate all our folks that are able to be here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll get into the message this morning. It's found in Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Amen. Verses 4. I'll read verses 4 down to verses number 9. Very familiar scripture. You've heard preached on, no doubt, many a times and talked about in the Word of God. Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. When the serpents were let loose on the children of Israel. And they began to die. Because of their because of murmuring and not listening to the Lord. And when they were given instruction. Numbers 21, verses 4, down to verses number 9. Begin reading in verses number 4. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up? Out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. For there is no bread. Neither is there any water. For our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said we have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that. He take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. Set it upon a pole. It shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole. It came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be back in your house today. Thank you for this week, and thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for everyone assembled on the side of our voice, and those who are watching through YouTube, and those who are watching on Facebook. Pray your word, Father, will accomplish the thing that you'd have it to today, Father. And Lord, we just pray, give us grace, hide us behind the cross as we preach your word. Father, let us say nothing contrary to the scriptures, Lord. Thank you for our church. We continue to pray for our nation, Lord. Help us this morning, Lord. Pray for that soul that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, that the Holy Spirit of God might convict their hearts and they'll come to know Jesus for it's everlasting too late, Father. And Lord, for everything that's accomplished here today, Lord, we'll give thee the glory and give thee the honor and the praise for it all. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll be seated this morning. Thank you for standing in honor of the Lord's word. I want to preach on this thought this morning. When the serpent strikes, when the serpent strikes, now, Jesus used this story as a type of himself. He said in John 3, 14, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, Jesus used this. So this is a picture of the substitutionary work of the Savior taking our punishment so we could be saved. He was our substitute. He took our place. We know that. Amen. But brass is a picture of the judgment of God. The judgment of God. But then there's a secondary principle here also. Brass is a picture of the judgment of God. But secondary, the Satan, the serpent, strikes at God's people. He strikes at God's people. Notice what the Bible says here in verses number 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. 
And they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. The Bible says much people died. So we find here that the Bible states that Satan, the serpent, cannot touch us without God's permission. He can't touch us without God's permission. He gets a whole lot more credit than we should give him. A lot of things he knows is because we tell him. Uh, he's not all knowing like God is. Praise Amen. He's limited. Amen. Praise he's always been limited. He's never had original thought. He's just a copycat. He copies what's always been because he knows the scripture says and there's nothing new under the sun. What's been before shall be again. Amen. So we find God permits Satan though to test us as he did in the case of Job. But God permits Satan also to fight against us. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So what does that mean? We're wrestling against the cohorts of hell. The devil and all his cohorts. But if God permits Satan also to destroy us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. So there are certain things Satan can do by God's permission. But we want to look a little while, two things this morning, on when the serpent strikes. When the serpent strikes. First of all, number one, we see the setting. We see the setting. When does the serpent strike? When does he strike? Well, according to the scriptures here, we see it was when they journeyed. Look at verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor. When they journeyed, that's when the serpent struck at them. Amen. Now we find, mark it down, the serpent will not strike you when you're sitting still and doing nothing. When you're sitting still and doing nothing, he will not strike. Usually a snake must be provoked before it will strike. Amen. And we need more Christians to get on the move. And we need more Christians to quit sitting still. And we need more Christians to quit doing nothing. Amen. amen. We need to be doing something. Amen. As the woman in the Bible when Jesus said she did what she could. Amen. But it happened when they journeyed. Now where did they journey? Well, first of all, they journeyed from a place of prayer. They journeyed from a place of prayer. They journeyed from Mount Hor, the place where Aaron died and was buried. What, what are you trying to say? Prayer will provoke a strike. When we get to praying, and God knows we've been doing a lot of praying around this church, and we need to continue to pray. We don't need to stop now. We need to keep our prayer lines open, amen. amen. Talking to God. But when you start praying, the serpent will begin to strike, amen. amen. He'll begin to strike. They journey from a place of prayer. Not only that, they journey from a place of assurance. The Bible says, by the way of the Red Sea. By the way of the Red Sea. It's a place where the enemy was conquered. Remember the Red Sea? God parted the Red Sea. Right. They crossed over on dry land. That was the place where the enemy was conquered. The, the sea was still shut. The enemy was still dead. And when you start getting some, some things nailed down in your life, watch this. When you get to the point you get your salvation nailed down, amen, you know that you're saved, you're sure of it, you're sealed. Hey, when you start leading somebody to the Lord, we call it soul winning. When you start separating yourself from the world, when you start having standards in your Christian life, when you start applying the scriptures to your life, amen, it will provoke a snake bite, amen. Because he don't like prayer, he don't like standards, he don't like the scripture, and he don't like a separated life, amen. He will attack you, but bless God, let him attack us. Why? Greater is he that is in me, he that is of the world. That's right, amen. Hey, but so much he, he can do. And then he's got to have permission. That's right, amen. Amen. Then he has to have permission. The journey from a place of prayer. They journeyed from a place of assurance. But they also journeyed to a place of victory. Bible says, they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea in verse 4. 
to watch this now. Compass the land of Edom. They journeyed to a place of victory. What was Edom? It was a place of Esau's descendants. To compass means they walk the boundary. They walk the border. Spiritually, they did not cross over to fleshly desires. When you start crucifying your flesh, and when you live like Paul said, I die daily. When you start crucifying the flesh, the serpent will strike. Yeah. Yeah. When you start cru crucifying your flesh, and you try to walk as Jesus walked, Think like Jesus thinks. The Bible said, let this same mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. When we start setting our affections on things above, look out. The serpent will strike. Amen. Amen. He will strike. We see the setting. When does the serpent strike? But we also see when they got discouraged. We find the serpent would strike when they journeyed. But the serpent would strike when they got discouraged. Now let me say this. It's very easy to get discouraged now. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Only thing I can tell you to do is get rid of your TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would help a lot. But now you can't watch Bugs Bunny and you know and the cartoons and all that stuff. And you'd be a whole lot better off. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But let me say this. When they got discouraged. They got discouraged because of the way. It was a struggle to pray. It was a struggle to keep the faith. It was a struggle to fight the flesh. And snakes prey on weak animals. They prey on weak animals. Discouragement will cause the believer to do some strange things. Now you got to be careful church. About getting discouraged in the day and hour that we're living in. Discouragement will cause you to do some strange things. Well what did they do? They begin to murmur. Mom, yeah. They begin to murmur. Amen. They, they begin to gripe. And complain. What you bring us out here for? We ain't got nothing to eat. Nothing to drink. We're better off back there in Egypt. Devil will tell a child of God that. You, uh, you're better off. Where you used to be. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Greatest thing ever happened to you is when Jesus saved you. Amen. Amen. Greatest thing that ever happened to any human being is to know Christ as a personal Savior. Amen. Amen. Yep. Is to know Christ as a personal Savior. But they begin to murmur against God. They begin to murmur against Moses. The best way to invite a snake bite is to advertise where you're at. When you begin to advertise, and see, when they begin to murmur and they begin to complain, the devil hurt them. He hurt them. His cohorts, they hurt them, amen. And they begin to advertise that they were discouraged and they had a problem and that will invite a snake bite. Yeah. It will invite a snake bite when you advertise where you're at with the Lord spiritually. And we do advertise. Uh -huh. Comes out this thing right here. Yep. We advertise every day of our life. Amen. They said, we loathe this light bread. We loathe this light bread. I remember being so poor coming home from school, me and my sister, because we were older than the other two. I had to get a chair. I stood up in the chair, and I knew where the bread was at. We always did keep some bread. I said, thank God for that. But we'd get home from school, my sister would be hungry and I'd be hungry because the babysitters had the other two. And so I would climb up in the chair, get up there on the counter, get the bread down, and get ketchup out of the refrigerator. I wouldn't have no meat. And I'd take that ketchup, put on that bread, and we make tomato ketchup sandwich. I'd have one and she'd have one. We was poor, but we survived, amen. Yeah. We was poor, but we survived. But they said, we begin to loathe this light bread. What that means is they detested. They wanted something better. They wanted something better. When you get saved, you can't get nothing better than what you got. Right. Best thing you'll ever have is the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll find nothing in this world ever compared to Him. We've got the best. When God gave His Son, as a substitute, He gave the world the best He had. Amen. Right. We already got the best. But they wanted something better. They strayed from the path. And you 
certainly will too when you begin to murmur and complain. You'll stray from the path. So we see the setting. When does the serpent strike? He strike when they journeyed. And he also came when they got discouraged. So we see the setting, but number two, here's our second point. We see the solution. Ain't you glad God has a solution for your problem? <laughs> well, I'm just going through something. God can't do nothing about it. Oh, yes, he can. He's got 66 books. And he's got a solution for everything you'll ever go through. Amen. 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 And then on top of that, I'll not leave you comfortless. Yeah, we you. have the comforter. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit according to Romans 8 9. So wow. we're not left comfortless. We see the setting, but there is a solution according to verse number 8. Amen. Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. Set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Now keep this in mind. The first solution in our lives is we strike back. As he strikes, we strike back. But the first thing we got to do is strike back with a substitute. You'll never get nowhere in this life. You'll never know about living the enjoyment of a holy and righteous God until you acknowledge the substitute. Amen? Amen. The substitute. John 3, 14, Even so must, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he said, When I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The Holy Ghost of God draws all men to the Lord Jesus Christ. John 6, 44, He draws them all to Him. Amen? But we have to strike back with a substitute. The serpent strikes at us with doubt. But we got to strike back with Calvary, amen. Show him the brazen serpent, amen. When he comes to you and he tries to get you to doubt, after you get saved, strike back. Take him back to Calvary. Take him back to where it happened at, amen. Remind him, I have a substitute. I'm not going to heaven on my own. I'm going to heaven because God made a substitute for me. And I trusted in Christ as my Savior. And I'm heaven bound with a hammer down, buddy. Amen. Can't touch this. Nope. You can touch this, but you can't touch what's down here. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. You got to strike back with a substitute. Amen. Then number two, you got to strike back with the scriptures. You got to strike back with the, with the scriptures three times Come in on. the wilderness. Matthew four, verse four, verse seven, verse number ten. Verse four, he tempts him with with bread. If thou be the son of God, now that's another message right there. If thou be the son of God. Thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be turned into, into bread. Jesus says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he tempts him in verse number four. He tempts him again in verse number seven when he takes him up on the pinnacle and he wants him to cast himself down, lest the angels bear thee up. And Jesus says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Thy God. Amen. And then finally he shows him the kingdoms of the world in verses number 10. And he tells him, If all this I'll give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me, he said, It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Amen. So we find you, God, when he bites at you, take him to the scripture. Give him the scripture, brother. Amen. He'll get off your back real fast. Amen. Yeah, break two. Hey. He'll cut a trail. <laughs> you got to strike back with the scripture. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6, 17. So we find you can chop off a snake's head with a sword. I can chop off a snake's head with a, with a hoe handle if I have to. Amen. But we find, thank God for the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Because it can bring him down to size. Psalms 119, verse number 11 says, Thy word have a hit in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yeah. Strike back with the substitute. This is your solution. Strike back with the scripture. Hey, strike back with supplication. Supplication. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 18. Mom, Praying man. always with all prayer and supplication. Mom, that man. supplication just simply means pull your heart out to God. Prayer and supplication in the spirit. Satan starts striking. We've got to tell him, 
I'm going to pray for some sinner that's lost. I'm going to pray for a child of God that's going through a hard time right now. I'm going to pray for a solution. I'm going to pray for revival. And I'm going to pray for uh, the power of God in my Christian life that I'll do what God would have me to do. Amen. Pray back with supplication when he strike back at him with supplication. Amen. But not only that, strike back at him with your service for the Lord. Yeah. Keep on doing something. Yeah, right. Keep on doing something. Bible says in Romans 12, 21, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. When the serpent strikes, let it remind you to go do something good for somebody else. <laughs> when he strikes, let it remind you to give extra service to God and to the church. Let it remind you to get in touch with God's people for fellowship and worship. But when he strikes, amen, come back with service and keep going for the glory of God. Amen. Keep on going. Amen. These times should excite you. Amen. God... Well, this thing is over with. God's going to hammer some sin, buddy. You watch. God's going to hammer some sin for this thing's over with. Amen. Because why? Because he's God. Because yeah. he's God. And he cannot go against his word. That which is done in secret shall be brought to the light. Yeah. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. Right. Amen. You will reap exactly what you sow. <laughs> Amen. God cannot lie. Amen. Just stick with God in the Word. He'll bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Strike back with your service. But listen to this. The last thing I'm going to share with you is strike back with standing. Standing. Now the Bible says in James 4 and verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Now, some people cut that verse in half and they say, Oh, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. No, you can't resist the devil until you submit yourself to God. Right. Yes. Amen. Strike back when you're standing. Acknowledge something, Christian. What is it? You need some help. You need some help. Sure, you do. You need some help. That's why the Bible says, Submit. Throw up the white flag. Get in God's army. Say, Listen, I can't handle this. I'm a private. Where's the commander in chief at? We got a commander in chief. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, and he can handle whatever we go through. Amen. Hey, we see our standing. Acknowledge you need help. And then you can attack the devil. It says resist, resist. It means to oppose him. This is a charge, not a spectator word. It don't mean sit back and watch what's going to happen. It means charge, charge. Hey, do like the Bible says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What does that mean? The church is charging against hell. Amen. Right. Amen. We're not spectating, dear God. We're charging. Right. Amen. 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 It is openly opposed everything Satan is sponsoring. And it's not neutral ground. You know, some people just want neutral ground. Well, I don't want to say. I don't want to take sides. No, uh-uh. You either watch for me or you're against me. That's right. That's what he said in his word. Amen. Conclusion. Israel sinned and they suffered the consequences. Right. But Israel struck back. The serpent is going to strike. And if we don't strike back, it is a common fact. A snake bite will kill you. Mm. Now, Brother Lynn has been bit by a snake before. Copperhead. They will kill you. Yeah. Well, what saved his life? The antidote. <laughs> The antidote. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to hell. How do you know? I've had the antidote. Right. Good, preacher. And it wasn't, hey, and it wasn't a shot in the arm neither. Yeah. I've had the antidote. 37 years ago, I fell down on my knees in a little old bedroom, and I got the antidote. Right. Yeah. And it's a miracle what this antidote does. Yeah. Come on, what does it preacher. do, preacher? It takes butt but out of you. <laughs> Amen. It takes that wicked lifestyle straight out of you. You want your lifestyle to change? Don't try to go through reformation, amen, and try to get some help. What you need is the antidote. Right. And the antidote will change your life. That's right. That's right. Amen. You have to have the antidote. Three stages. There's the bite. There's the numbness. If we're not careful, we're going to bring forth death. What we need is the solution. What would make our world a better place? The solution. It don't come here from figuring it out. It's got to come from here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's got to come from here. Right. The only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Prince of peace. Mm -hmm. 
Greater is he that is in us than he that is of the world. We'll never have satisfaction without him. And when the serpent strikes, we see the setting for when he does, but we also see the solution for what we need. We need a substitute. We need his scripture. We need supplication, service, and standing for the Lord. And I pray by the grace of God until God takes me out of here, either while it's by the grave out there or by the rapture, I want to stand. I will do all I can to stand. He said, when you've done all you can do, he said, just stand. Amen. Just stand. Stand for the cause of Christ. But I desire for anybody who's watching this today through YouTube, Facebook, somebody here today doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that you'll come to know the Lord for it's everlasting too late. Amen.